Hi folks, and welcome to Colonization. Sid Meier's Colonization, uh, to be more precise. One of the quintessential turn-based strategy games from way back when in the 90s. Those older amongst, <laughs> amongst yourselves, like me, will have played this uh, when you were young, or maybe not so young. For everyone else, this is an old game. Maybe even before you were born. Maybe from before you were born. 95. In this game, as the name indicates, you will have to try to effectively colonize, but more importantly, gain independence from your mother country and become an independent nation in the New World. New World being the Americas, essentially. So, let's jump right in and customize our New World. It is interesting to play the America scenario at least once, but, I mean, you already know where the tribes are, where terrain types are, etc, etc. So it keeps things fresh, it's best to just have a randomized game world. So, we're going to... Maybe... Hmm... Now that I think of it... Well, we don't want a lot, lot, lot of land. Or maybe we do for more Indians, even if we strictly don't need it for colonies. Um, yeah, why not? Let's do that. And do you want it to be archipelago, continents, or random distribution? Um, I'd say it's usually more difficult, but also sort of more realistic to have it uh, continent-wise. Well, let's do that, and for the other two uh, variants, just temperate and normal. So we'll have a nice variety of terrain types. We are going to be playing Viceroy, well, maybe Viceroy. The AI will be very, very aggressive. Mm, actually, yeah, this will actually match. You're going to see what I mean uh, uh, just a bit. Let's play Governor instead. And we're going to play the Dutch. Now, this is a bit of a pet peeve of mine, but who in their right minds <laughs> thought that when making a game about the Age of Discovery, uh, decided, no, uh, let's not uh, have Portugal in the game. Let's uh, have the Dutch in the Americas. Um, yeah. I mean, the Guiana, sure. Curaçao, yeah. At one point, you had a tiny colony in New Amsterdam. Whatever. I mean, really. What are the Dutch doing in this game? Apparently, people uh, and the de development team thought that uh, Portugal would be even too similar to Spain. Have they ever been to Portugal? Do they have any idea of... I mean, that's like saying the Belgian and the Danes are very similar. It's, I mean, the distance between Brussels and uh, Copenhagen, not that different from Lisbon to Madrid, but still, whatever. In any case... We're picking the, picking the for a very specific reason, um, because their bonus is pretty good for our purposes and game style. Immigration will essentially give you faster, free, let's say, cost, uh, effective immigration from the mainland, from the mother country. Cooperation would give you a bonus for Indian relations, which we really don't care that much about, especially once we uh, have a special advisor. That does pretty much the same thing. 
conquest would mean you have a, an attack bonus versus Indians versus natives and I mean it's not like they're difficult to uh, fight against so yeah so we're going to to see Dutch bonus of not as uh, fast dropping and quicker recovery commodity prices the Dutch which to be frank would have been uh, a similar bonus that, that the Portuguese would have because well the Dutch colonization and trade strategy was essentially hey Portuguese are doing this let's do that uh, but more brutally uh, <laughs> more ruthlessly <laughs> that is essentially the Dutch strategy for uh, instead and actually many of the colonial outposts and trade outposts uh, the Dutch uh, ended up having were Portuguese uh, holdings that they um, conquered essentially well, when the Portuguese uh, were for a short period of time under the Spanish crown before they uh, managed to uh, kick Spanish butt back to Madrid again but let's go past all that and choose our name which would be the uh, Dutch pronunciation of applesauce be applesauce <laughs> which is obviously a not a, at all um, not at all a uh, xenophobic or caricatural uh, caricature um, of uh, how did that, that produce uh, the words it's not at all it's perfectly reasonable that's um they talk like they're uh, coughing or sneezing constantly that's not at all an exaggeration so you can read this if you're interested eh, it's a bit of a, a bland uh, slightly uh, oversimplified uh, take on history more importantly commodity prices in Amsterdam do not collapse as quickly as in other European ports and they recover more quickly meaning that uh, you make more money selling stuff to Europe oh they don't have a king per se they have their Stadtholder um, uh, because they were actually no a united set of provinces and uh, not so much um, an autocratic uh, monarchy we'll have a few vignettes of uh, finely crafted pixel art that uh, thankfully enough uh, really matches what a Dutch port would look like much more than uh, any other uh, maybe English uh, construction uh, types were uh, similar to these but uh, French and Spanish ports would not look like this at all uh, the housing is really really off for what you'd see uh, further south in Europe at the time Anywho, there goes our expedition to find uncharted lands. And establish colonies for the greater glory of the Netherlands. Pioneers and soldiers, that actually matches what the uh, composition is. And sets out to find a new life, a new beginning, a new world. Yes, indeedy. And so they're off. And here they are, in the new world. So, let's make sure that uh, we get to choose when turns end. And let's try to find some uh, land. Land ho! Discovery of the New World. The New Netherlands? I don't think so. Aha! Well, we have some uh, nice fishery. 
a hill. Um, mountainside. There might be a good spot for a colony there or there, potentially. So, what we're going to do is hedge our bets. Ah, we've already met the natives. They met us right uh, when landing. The Sioux have a glorious nation of six caps. They generally offer us the land they now occupy as if we needed the offer. We'll just take it, you damn savages. What? Did you think we were going to come in peace? Oh, actually, yes, you did. Yeah, sure, well, we'll live with you in peace as brothers. Until we want your land. We can visit Sioux villages, which is pretty good. Share knowledge with us. I'm thinking on doing the reverse, uh, having you share knowledge with us. And send wagon trains or ships to trade with them. That could also become useful at some point. So let's see. Uh, is that a good spot for a colony? Yep, that's our first colony. Fishery, wood, or we got the basics to get started. And there's some rumors in the jungle. Lost City rumor. We're not going to go there with our own guys until we've got... Huh. Well, ideally, until we got um, a very special advisor, uh, or at the very least, some uh, season scouts to get a better chance of uh, a proper positive outcome uh, when going there. So let's get, have a quick check out the European prices for stuff. As per usual, right, silver is the highest but collapses very quickly if you start selling in uh, any degree of uh, large quantities. Which sort of accurately models the uh, economic catastrophe it was for the Spanish when they started... Uh, well, it's a, an odd issue to have, but they had too much gold and silver! <laughs> Which, well, when your economy runs on uh, gold and silver, what that means is there's a gigantic, enormous inflationary uh, dynamic, meaning that uh, prices skyrocket uh, and you go bankrupt very quickly. And that happened to the Spanish a few times over a few centuries because they were not very good at managing uh, how much gold and silver they brought in and um, the effects that had on their economy. But then again, Serves them right for being so greedy. Now let's try to check out... Okay, well, not too close to the Indian village. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, I actually wanted to make uh, the pioneer clear the forest there. Can we go around? I don't think we can. Okay, so, uh, religious, we're already uh, on the take, so let's go sail back to Amsterdam, potentially get some uh, people back. And let's uh, found our first colony right there. Okay, the merchantman is going back to Amsterdam. Our pioneers are going to plow the land and get some free uh, grassland there, and our soldiers are going to found New Amsterdam. Which, of course, is not going to be New Amsterdam. It's going to be... Right, so... Um, well, once we get wood, we could build some docks to be able to fish. But until then, let's concentrate on getting some Liberty Bells going. Aha! Here we go. So, what... Do you want as advisor? So, Minui is decent, though not great. Indians no longer demand payment for the land. Francisco Coronado, which, I mean, sure. Trench Congress, all existing colonies in an area can become visible on the map. I mean, if if you didn't know where they were already, he's quite terrible. Hernan Cortez. Now, he was a, uh, an interesting historical character, a horrible person, and, uh, but 
In terms of gameplay, that means that uh, if you ever were to destroy a native settlement, they will always give you treasure and a much greater quantity than if uh, you didn't have this guy. So essentially, even if you do need to clear out a settlement or two, do not do it before getting him as an advisor. Especially because the King's Galleons transport the treasure free of charge. If they don't, if you don't have this, you need to ha either have a Galleon to carry the treasure back yourself, or pay the King a uh, King's Ransom, essentially, uh, a percentage of the booty. Thomas Jefferson, pretty good, uh, increases Liberty Bell production of all statesmen by 50%, which is our what our guy is doing, states bell. And uh, Jean de Brebeuf, all missionaries will be experts, meaning that you don't really need to hire missionary experts anymore. Uh, and so Jesuit missionaries, essentially, in gameplay terms. But any old uh, unit that you uh, anoint as missionaries will be as good as uh, the real thing. Which is not bad, but not right now. Not very useful to us right now. So, I think our first choice would be this, so we can quickly grow our independent sentiment that improves our productivity and overall output. It's a pretty good advisor to start off with. We could do better. We could have uh, had uh, the very important uh, Lost City Rumor advisor for our scouts, but even so, Jefferson is a pretty good choice. So, we don't have any money yet, and we wouldn't have anyone good to hire either, apart from the missionaries. Uh, I think we're going to wait for the immigration to kick in next turn. Ah. Well, the French found some treasure. And, okay, missionaries were picked automatically, so let's take them. We'll need some money to bring some horses back next time. But for that, we'll need to take some furs to Amsterdam to sell. Come on, clear the lumber so we can get up. Ah, already up to 10%, good. So let's go to Salvador. Ah, 20 lumber, done. Excellent. So, um, we could... Have the missionaries go to the Indian village. We could have the Indians go to the... the missionaries go to the Indian village. And then take the land because we need that wood. So let's enter the village for the first time you get this vignette. And you can see, here you have a few hints, whether they're peaceful Indians, whether they like you or not. So they're just a sort of farming, a farming tribe, and they're happy. Let's establish the mission, or we could incite them if we had enemies, but we don't. So let's first just convert. the Indian tribe to Catholicism and they'll have a bright orange uh, cross because it is a very good missionary that did the job. So, uh, I think now we could uh, maybe take care of the wood. Now, our land. Let's get some lumber so we can get some docks built. So, you guys take the valuable stuff back to uh, Europe. We need some horses. Alright, so grassland We'll get us some more food and tobacco instead of furs. Let's plow that to improve productivity. And we're at 12%. Yeah. With only one belt, bell being produced is not... It's not going to improve that quickly, but... We're not desperate for more... Oh, they are attacking us. I wasn't expecting that. Thankfully, we won. 
Okay, let's unload the cargo. Ten furs, tobacco sold. You get a breakdown over there. You can also sort of slide them into uh, to sell and get uh, the price manually. I just prefer having it done automatically all in one go. Uh, we cannot uh, hire anything else because we don't have the money to. We're going to just bring in the minimum amount of horses. You can shift click to get... Um... No, no, no. I said two. Yeah, there we go. And because you need at least two to, bra uh, to bribe. To breed. And uh, let's uh, set sail for the new world. There we go. We have some indentured servants. And okay, that's one horse per turn. That is already breeding with the extra food. Have we got the wood uh, for dogs? Yeah, exactly the right amount. So let's start building that so we can get a lot of food out of the fishery. And let's send the indentured servant to learn what they gotta teach us. Hopefully something good. So, uh, not much in terms of things to take just yet. So let's sail a bit further south. Try to scout out a good location for another colony, perhaps. Maybe there wouldn't be too bad. Or there. Maybe even, yeah, here. So, uh, archery and suspicion. Oh, let's live there. Let's see if they can uh, accept us. No. Not for the time being, at least. Oh, that's a big chunk of land right here. Okay, so let's go back to the colony then. We'll have these fellas... Well, they don't have anything better to do. Defend the colony with some muskets. And the Cherokee are wreaking havoc in the Spanish colony of Isabella. Well, the Spanish are already... Uh, oh, they're not far away from us, apparently. So, that might prove dangerous. Let's go back to Salvador. Ah, we've got some ore miners ready to come to the New World. Okay, prices are rising for us, that's good. Got some tobacco to take back to Europe. How long before... a while, so 13 turns. Yeah, tobacco just rose, we'll have a 33% uh, boost to our output. Uh, you fellas are not very good pioneers. Should we have a second colony there? It's a pretty good spot. And it is good to have colonies close by. Though it would probably be even better to have it right there and not close to the coast. And I say that because when it'll come uh, to fighting for independence, uh, the European royalist uh, forces can only uh, disembark uh, from the coast, as it would uh, obviously seem logical. So they will not be able to attack the colonies directly if they're inland. They'll have to march there eventually if they want to get there. Uh, so... Yeah. Okay, let's go, go into the colony. Have those uh, tools put to use. How much fruit can you produce? Three. Okay. Let's do that. Speed uh, horse production uh, a bit. Instead of one per turn, we'll have two. We're gonna need a lot of horses. And those ducks, once they're built, you fellas are going to go fishing. Okay, let's uh, exemplify how that works. There you go. Just sold them. 
Can we hire anyone? Okay, it's not going to go up below 200, which is a lot. And it would be just criminals and indentured servants anyway. They're terrible. And the Sioux still do not like us. Damn it. Okay, well, that uh, gave us one extra horse, but I think we're in need of more bells more than horses. So, yeah. While we're still working on the docks, let's try to get those bells out. Ah, cloth has fallen. That's not good. And as if you noticed, uh, when we add population to the colony, the percentage of uh, independence uh, goes down because when people come to the New World, they're all loyalists. So they sort of need to be imbued with the spirit uh, of independence by their fellow colonists after they arrive. Ah, well, the Spanish are already uh, killing the Cherokee. Yeah, which are uh, to the south here. Uh, lots of potentially good spots for colonies. I mean, food and uh, anything that is either broadleaf forest that'll turn into... Uh, I forgot. What type of terrain does it turn into? Damn it. Uh, oh, no. Terrain types. Prairies for cotton, uh, or tropical forest that turns into savanna, or conifer forest that turns into grasslands, are the best because they can produce uh, tobacco, sugarcane, and cotton, respectively. Uh, particularly if, when you clear the forest, there's like a special icon uh, for each one of those things, like uh, the special tree here. Prime timber for winter. Uh, but that's sort of a random chance to get, so you can never be too sure uh, of getting it where you want it. But still, better than desert, which is what scrub land turns into when you clear it of the cacti. Ah, finally, Thomas Jefferson. He'll just stand alone in this room for the remaining of uh, the next three centuries. Oh, those are the Arawak. Yeah. Ah, okay. Nice uh, oasis. Dogs still uh, some ways off. All right. So here we go. Jan de Witt. Trade of foreign colonies is allowed, and your foreign affairs report becomes more revealing. Useful, but not crucial. William Penn. Cross-production in all colonies has increased by 50%. So essentially what Jefferson does, but for crosses, which is immigration. And Benjamin Franklin. The King's European Wars have no further effect on the relations between powers in the New World. Means that uh, if, for instance, uh, the Stadtholder decides that the English suck and declares war on them, we will also be at war with the English colonies. But, if we had Benjamin Franklin, that would no longer be the case. Plus, New World powers would always offer peace when we meet. Because that's uh, how good Benjamin Franklin is. Paul Revere. When a colony with no standing soldiers is attacked, the colonist automatically takes up any stockpiled muskets in defense of the colony. Yeah, the uh, apocryphal tales of Paul Revere... Uh, not that useful. Hernando de Soto, however, whole other story. With de Soto, results of exploring lost statue rumors are always positive, and all units have an extended sighting radius. This is what we want to get our season scouts out and about exploring the world and giving us the goodies. 
Okay, so I think we've found pretty much our domain for the remainder of the game. This seems like an easily defensible bay. So with a, with a couple of uh, frigates or whatever, privateers, and have our colonies essentially maybe one more with a port somewhere around there, maybe there, to make use of the... maybe. And colonies just ringing around this area. We'll have to see once we explore the terrain but uh, things are looking well it also depends on what other powers are doing around here but also already looking pretty good okay they're a bit miffed you can see from the expression but they're giving us stuff so that's a good sign more rumors and minerals Let's go to see what Salvador has. Tobacco and the sugar they gave us. Excellent. The docks are almost finished. Yeah, three turns away from uh, us being able to have some uh, real population growth with uh, extra fish. Okay, so let's take the tobacco. Let's take the sugar and sail off to Amsterdam. A few years go by, so they have time to go uh, all the way around the Atlantic and load all of it. That's an extra 150 uh, ducats. Let's see, ah, we could recruit farmers, though we don't really need farmers. Hmm. We will eventually, but we don't now. Still better than regular colonists, so let's make the most of it. Alright, we're up to 20%. We've got the docks, finally. Uh, so we can go and see that uh, that produces a whole lot of of food compared to regular uh, farming on the forest grounds. Um, yeah, let's go for a lumber mill. A lumber mill will double your hammer output, meaning that if you had a master carpenter, you would quadruple your uh, production capacity. So right now we don't have any wood, uh, so we'd like to have you get us some wood because we uh, are more interested in having um, some more Liberty Bells than uh, faster production, at least for now. And as it has says here, if we get to 50%, every single colonist will get a production bonus of plus one. That's plus two when we get to 100%. All colonies should uh, strive to be at 100 or close to that percent at all times. Ah, so, our ruler thinks that we should uh, pay them more in taxes, and they decided to raise it by 2%, so that's a no-go. We don't want to pay any taxes on anything. So, we'll have the Salvador Food Party, which sounds better than uh, <laughs> actual he is. What this means is, we'll throw all the food stocked in Salvador in the harbor like a... Uh, salty Americans did to uh, tea at the Boston Harbor when they decided that um, they were paying uh, more than enough taxes already, despite them p paying a lot less taxes than uh, pretty much every other single subject of the English crown at the time. And um, yeah, just generally be uh, really greedy sons of bitches that don't want to contribute to the uh, common good. So yeah. Throw the food into the sea. And that means that uh, 
there's now a boycott, meaning we cannot buy or sell that in Europe. Unless we lift the boycott and uh, let me just show you how that would work. If you click on it, oh, parliamentary boycott. This is taxation without representation. Unfair. Yeah. Who do they sound like? Yeah. Wrong. You're wrong. Yeah, they sound just like that because that's who they were. The sort of people. Yes, the exact same sort of people. People that don't want to pay their fair share taxes. That's why they elect people like this. So, let's get some farming done. We could pull the old switcheroo. Yeah, so. You could go produce some bells. You could go produce some wood. I'm not putting this guy over here because uh, criminals and servants are not good at uh, clerical work, let's say. Uh, only uh, outdoors work. Because they be not too smart. And you can go get us some ore out of this mountain here. Okay, and we're still bringing in a healthy amount of food for those horsies. Excellent. So, how long? Still a while. Uh, let's go check out uh, that part of the uh, coastline over there. Ah, the English. All right, and they're already plowing their savannas. Ah, great, some converts. The missionary is already paying off. Okay, let's go to Salvador. Yeah, here we are, converts. Converts are particularly good at uh, field work, so... Do you think the Indians are still mad at us? Yeah, they are. Hmm. Maybe you should build a stockade before anything else. Ah, but the lumber mill is more important. Um, so. Actually. Yeah, one less food. Actually, no, yeah, more food. And let's get that uh, lumber mill going. Ah, Spanish are burning Cherokee villages. How Spanish of them. All right, and we've got plenty of tobacco. Not sure I want to take the ore, though. Uh, we're producing quite a lot, so yeah. Need the money. Might as well make the most of it right now. We want seasoned scouts as quickly as possible. Have any come up? No. Watch to train some. We can't. Ah, oh, I forgot about that. We can only train them in the new world. That's right. Or recruit them um, directly from... Uh, yeah, I remember now. How long before we get the Soto? Uh, not that long. All right. Got some servants to take, uh... Ah! Excellent. Here we go. That's exactly what we wanted. Three horses with the people. That's uh, always a good choice when you've got some uh, people with horses around here. It's free horses. Why not take them?
So, um, you guys, I think you want to go talk to the Cherokee. And you guys, I think you want to wait. Uh, can you go into the colony without harming? Yes, you still can. Good. Will you produce more than f enough food to... No, you will not. You're making just enough food to sustain yourselves, but nobody else. That's no good. Would we still get... No. But... Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, do that. Let's get the lumber mill growing there. In fact, I think we want to turn you into... Yeah. Dragoons. And have the extra horses come around once the uh, scouts are ready to um, to go. Yeah, once the Soto is uh, on the job. So we can go exploring, finding some rumors and whatnot. So, uh, when's the next... Uh, oh, that's not what I meant. Still a ways off. I think, yeah, I'd like to know where the Spanish are, how far away. Okay, let's try to uh, navigate the river. Units go twice as fast, like if it's uh, it were a road, as it should be, because rivers were the main thing. Uh, thoroughfares for trade and transportation for a long time. Ah, right there. All right. Actually, three times as fast. Aha, yes, the Cherokee. Let's speak. Yes, we'll visit you and bring wagon trains. Now let's go back to Salvador, get some new uh, wares and cargo to take to Europe to sell. How far off? Two turns, I think. You'll get this lumber mill done. Six tobacco, they're still not very happy. Okay, they have another village right here. Uh, let's see what they can teach us, and if it doesn't suit us, let's go to that one. And we're already at 50 horses. Once you get over 50, you'll see that instead of a maximum of two uh, horses uh, per year, you'll get four possible growth, but you still need the food to, for them to breed enough. Oh, that's not good. Tobacco is our main. Hmm. Ah, uh, tobacco is what we're selling, uh, but four percent tax forever is a lot. That's potentially thousands of ducats. So... Yeah. We're not... We're not taking it. We don't want to pay taxes. So, that done, uh, we should get a stockade as quickly as possible to defend ourselves from uh, hostilities. And as you see, now we can uh, make 12 hammers per turn. Which is not too bad. Um, we could also work on the printing press to speed up that... Um, yeah. In fact, we need everything, because uh, everything is pretty good. Schoolhouse to train up our uh, colonists. 
printing press to improve uh, independence. Uh, stockade for protection is stable to uh, get more horses going. A blacksmith shop to uh, get some uh, tools out. But we'll need to get a lot more specialist workers for that to be worth it. So, first things first, let's see what these guys can teach us. Yeah, they're happy. A fur trader. Not the most useful of uh, professions uh, right now. Maybe later. Rain check on that. I'll get back to you. Don't call us, we'll call you. So we cannot sell tobacco in Europe anymore. So let's rely on ore. There should be yeah, an immigrant soon, so let's go. And oh, more rumors. Let's not go into them and see what they can teach us if it's any better than fur trading. Which isn't terrible, but not the most difficult or expensive thing to to get. If you remember, uh, no, not purchase train. Fur traders, pretty much some of the cheapest people to train in Europe. So if you get, uh, I don't know, some pioneers or farmers or something, it's certainly uh, more valuable. So stockade uh, progressing nicely. We've got some stockpiled wood they're uh, eating up, uh, but that's why we've got much, much lumber to use it. Ah, and we've got some master carpenters. That's pretty good. Speed up uh, construction. Three hundred and fifty. And oh yeah, we want these guys. Some elder statements. Elder statement, please. Yes, yes, yes. Do we want to sell? Maybe we do. Let's take some trade goods to trade with uh, Sue. They might like us better. So, what can you teach us? Ore miner. Well, we already got some, but and it's not as useful, well, valuable as fur trader. But it is more useful at the beginning. Yeah, but we could train them quite easily, so no. Let's uh well let's go for the fur trading then. I don't want to travel too far with these guys, not uh not right now. Come on, how long to the Soto? Still a while. How's the foreign report? Let's see. Is there anyone with more population than us? Oh, the French have one more. Or two more, actually. Probably mostly troops, though. They're quite militaristic, the uh, AI at uh, high difficulty levels. Ah, well, good thing. They'll, they'll fight each other, then. Let's take the people into uh, Salvador. Alright, so... Carpenters are very good at making stuff. You fellas can go to scouting. You're very good at uh, getting people to want freedom. And you can go back to farming. And you guys... Yeah, I think we can focus on some belt production for the time being. Stockade is almost done. Oof, the Spanish are going to kill the Cherokee here as well. So it's a good thing we're learning that uh, sooner rather than later. Okay, stockade 
done, I think we could uh, go for the printing press, get our uh, independent sentiment high and uh, quick. And then get a schoolhouse. So, uh, what can we take to Europe to sell the ore? So let's do that. Do you want to trade with us? Yes. They're not paying much. Okay, we accept. Just in the for a goodwill gesture. Uh, sugar, sure. Oof. Okay. Let's learn from them while we can. And well, fingers crossed. Hope the rumors are good. Three thousand eight hundred. Wow. Well, can't take it back to Europe in, in, until <laughs> Hernan Cortez is an advisor, but it'll come in handy soon enough. So, does the tribe want to give us something? Let's talk to them. No, they just want to tell us of nearby lands. Uh, okay, so they told us a bit about that. It's a sort of a square radius around the... Um, the camp that the people that the Indians tell us about, but yeah. So when you move into a city, uh, this pops up, and you can have them get their share, which is half. Or if you have Cortez, that would be the tax percentage. Or you could just wait till you have your own galleon and uh, not pay the crown anything, which is what we're going to do. No. You shall not have anything. Ha! Huh. Well, a promising start to a degree. A promising start to a degree. Uh, we're not min-maxing or anything, but uh, just going through a leisurely game of colonization until independence. And a healthy colony. Exploration uh, to uh, begin with some seasoned scouts here. And we're well off. Off to a very good start. Still want to have more colonies and potentially find very special secrets in uh, these rumors. If one comes up, uh, you'll see exactly why. But all of that is going to be next turn. See you then.